said it is finished it's an announcement to satan and his cohorts the word of god is so sure unsteadfast you can stake your life on it. The devil was popping with champagne bottle. He was celebrating and saying that everything is all right. Everything has been packaged. But on the third day, the God I serve is the Almighty God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was nothing made that was made. He, he was life. And that light was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it somebody shout there is power in the word of god this person i want to bring i want to speak briefly concerning her if you know know me you know i don't easily connect to people i love everybody but to have a close relationship, it takes a while. I don't know why, but once your spirit connects to my spirit, that's it. And this young lady I want to bring here today, some years ago, the Lord brought her my way. And I've watched her over the years. She's real. very humble but real if she says yes it is yes and some time ago when her beloved went to be with the lord how many of you know that we are going to heaven all of us i watch old men in their church old men uh, old enough to be her father saying we want you to take his place she did not campaign for it she didn't struggle for it but they say mama it's you we want <laughs> and the great work the husband is doing i went there during her uh, daughter's wedding i was taken aback the grace is already on her i said when did you do all this i'm saying she doesn't talk much, but she's loaded. There's no other person. My daughter, I call her my daughter. If you see her come to me, her time see, she, 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 when she does some things, I say, no, 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 no. If you see her come to me, very humble. But God talks to her. She's no other person. Lovely woman of God. No wonder when I came out of the, my office, I saw all the, all the people that came with her. Could you please stand? Let's see you. Let's celebrate them. Celebrate them. That's what I'm talking about. Celebrate them. Hallelujah. Men and women, they all came with her. Doing a great work for the kingdom. Took off from where the husband stopped. You will not lose your reward. There's no other person than Reverend Jane Onolapon of Abundant Church, Abundant Life Church. Let's celebrate her. That's one of the elders, one of the pastors. Let's celebrate her church. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. One more time, praise the Lord. God bless you. Please take your seat. Thank you. Watch all for all that you are doing. Praise the Lord. How many of you are ready for a blessing tonight? Manda shaka yabasata. Rise up on your feet. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord praise. This is the third night of this meeting. The third night of any meeting is a miraculous night. Because three is the number of resurrection. 
Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices and just give the Lord worship as we open up the heavens for great grace that comes upon us tonight. Great power from above. Hallelujah. You are my God. You are my God. You are the eyes I used to see. You are the key that opens the door. You are the owner of my soul. The bush that burneth and never consumes. What shall I render to you, O oh Lord? I will bow down and worship your name. You are my Lord. If you know it, sing with me. Let's enter into, into his presence with praise. You are my God. You are my God. You are the eyes I used to see. You are the key that opens the door. You are the roadner of my soul. The bush that burneth and never comes to you. Time. Can you lift up all your hands and connect to heaven now? Oh connect to heaven. Get out of the natural. God is about to release great power by great grace tonight. Yes, Lord, you are the one. we thank you tonight thank you for great things you've been doing since this program started thank you for what you are set to do in this place tonight thank you for great grace thank you for great power thank you for the manifestation of your glory thank you Lord because of your presence that is all over this place thank you because no one in this place will go back on the same way he or she came in here Thank you because we are going with power. We are going with grace. Our lives will never remain the same again. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you Father because you are going to glorify yourself. Thank you Lord because you are going to bring down your presence into the life of everyone. When we are out of this place, people that see us, we know that we have been with Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Have your place, O oh Lord. Do what only you can do. And take all the glory. No one will share in your glory. But we will take all the blessing. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Say a better amen in this house. Hallelujah. Please open with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I want to read from verse 27 to 31. Hallelujah. If you don't have a Bible, please move close to somebody that has one. I love reading the scriptures and I like it when people follow when the word of God is being read. Verse 27. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel? My way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God. You can see a question mark after that statement. Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. To them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. 
But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Can somebody say amen? amen. Let me hear you say great power. Great, power. great grace. Great say one more time, great power. Great, power. great grace. Great. From this scripture we just read, there was a time in the life of God's chosen people, Israel and Judah. They came before the Lord and they began to complain. They began to lament, like we saw in verse 27. They said, Lord, our ways are hidden from you. You can't even see us anymore. You are not concerned about our lives. You have ignored our predicaments. You don't even know our troubles. You don't care what is happening to us anymore. We are so weak. We are so feeble. And they began to complain. God, where is your face? We don't understand what is happening. It's like there's no relationship between us and you any longer. We are your chosen. We are your children. But your, our ways are hidden from you. You are blind to us. You can't see us anymore. And then the Lord sent the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah came to them. The Lord God of heaven knew that the problem they had was lack of power. They were weak, they were feeble, that's why they are complaining. You see, when you see a man complaining, you know that that man has a problem. That's the situation of a lot of people today, and perhaps many seated here tonight. But I have good news for you, power is coming your way. You might have come in here complaining about one thing or the other. By the time you are leaving this place today, your life will never be the same again. Yeah. Say a better amen if you believe. Yeah. Isaiah came and he told them, what's the matter with you people? Why are you saying this? Have you not heard? Have you not known that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, is neither weary nor fainting. He is strong and in his strength, he gives power to the weak. Verse 29, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that has no might, he increases strength. Power is what you need. Power is the force for functioning. Power is what you need to move from the level you are. Listen, if somebody is weak, all he needs is power. So he said, look, my God, the God we serve, he understands what you are going through. You don't understand. You are simply complaining that God is not this, God is not that. But God has an understanding beyond your comprehension. God has an understanding before you, beyond your complaints. God knows what you need. He knows you need power. And the Bible says, Isaiah lifted up his voice and he said, He giveth power to the faint and to them that has no might increases strength tonight i've come to tell you that in that situation power is coming your way you will stop complaining i said you will stop complaining in the name of the in fact let me tell you the prayer i prayed which i believe god has answered is that your story your language will change after tonight you will no longer complain that God is no longer is not there. You will rise up tall and you will say, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Is somebody listening to me tonight? Hallelujah. God knows that it's because they lack power that they are complaining. And let me tell you, beloved, power is so important. I'm taking you somewhere in this journey tonight. Gadgets are useless without electrical power. All these gadgets we have here, as expensive as they are, as, 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 as well manufactured as they are, without electrical power, they will be useless. Projects, big, big projects, are mere paperwork where there are no financial power. Is somebody listening to me? Ministry will become a misery when there is no spiritual power. It will become a thing of complaint and ridicule. Put everything together, have your structures, have everything, but without the power of the Holy Ghost, it is nothing. 
that's why when that man brought the epileptic son to the disciples they were there struggling and struggling for several hours nothing happened to that boy when jesus came down from the mount of transfiguration and he saw them the man ran to jesus he said jesus look i've been here for hours your servants your disciples couldn't do anything about this boy master if you can please do something christ healed the boy and he looked at them he said how long will i be with you how long will you be with me that you cannot exercise power listen to me tonight ministry without the power of the holy ghost is misery Things that need physical strength, if there are no physical strength, such people will be useless. There's World Cup going on in Brazil. Imagine the most celebrated footballer in the whole world, sick and weak, without physical strength. What happens to him? He's useless. Ah, I pray that God will release power to somebody tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God gives power. Let me have you say, God gives power. And He's going to give me power tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Isaiah said something that is very profound. Which I believe is the revelation that God has given to our big daddy to bring this topic, great power, great grace. Isaiah said, don't you know that this God we serve, there is no searching of his understanding. There is an understanding that God has that he has revealed unto us in this meeting. Listen, the deep secrets of God are revealed by those who can go into the deep. When you hear grace, 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 most times you cannot connect it with power because power looks like something, something physical. But let me tell you, embedded in grace is power. God in his infinite wisdom packaged power in grace i'm going to show you shortly so if you need power get grace when you get grace you get power <laughs> hallelujah now there are diversities of grace in the scriptures second corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 2 Corinthians 9, 8, Apostle Paul said, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you will have sufficiency of all things, and you will abound unto every good works. All grace makes you sufficient and makes you abound to every good works. That means there are diversities of grace. And if you look through the scriptures, you will see all kinds of grace. Romans chapter 12 verse 6, Apostle Paul also said that God gives gifts differently according to his grace. So, you see somebody exhibiting a gift, there is a special grace that goes with it. You see another exhibition of another grace, there is a special, another gift, there is a special grace that goes with it. We just saw a great drama. That is grace. We have the choir. That is grace. If you don't have the grace to dramatize, when you stand there, you just do rubbish and nobody will clap for you. All kinds of grace. Tonight I pray that the grace you need, God will release it to you. I say I pray for you that God will give you the grace that you need. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Apostle Paul talked about diversities of grace in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10. He says, I thank God for the grace he gave me to be a wise master builder. That was a grace he needed to function as one of the greatest apostles in his time. If God didn't give him that grace to be a master, a wise master builder, there will be a lot of problems. Many of us in our various houses, in our various workplaces, in our various ministries, there are some level of incompetence. There are some levels of, of, of challenges. All you need is not the physical power, because it is not by power nor by might. It is grace you need. In that grace, the power is embedded. He spoke to Zechariah, he said, Oh, are thou great mountain before Zerubbabel? What will happen? You shall become a plain. It shall not be by power, 
It shall not be by might, it shall be my, by my spirit. And he said, he will carry the headstone thereof, shouting, grace, 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 grace. Can somebody say grace, 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 grace? Shout it and receive it tonight. Grace, 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 grace. And say amen. You know what it means to carry the headstone? To take the power, the source of that trouble. You will carry it and you will shout it is by grace. Hallelujah. It gives diverse graces. And hear me, the specific grace and the quantity of the grace that God gives you determines how well you fulfill your assignment in life and how well you live your life. The specification of that grace, the quantity of that grace determines how well you are fulfilled and how well you live your life. That's why I thank God that the theme is not just grace and power. It is what? Come on, talk to me, somebody. Great grace and great power. So we are not settling for something small in this meeting. I don't know about you. Oh my God. Tell your neighbor I'm not settling for something small in this meeting. Say like a minute, I'm not settling for anything small in this meeting. I am settling for a great level. A great level of power that comes by a great level of grace. Can you pray that prayer in a moment? I feel the presence of the Lord in this place right now. I want you to close your eyes and pray. Lord, I am not settling for something small in this meeting. I am demanding for a great grace under which great power is embedded. God, God is doing something right now. I know it when the Spirit of the Lord is moving. I want you to pray that prayer. You want to lay your hand upon your head, put your hand upon your head, and say, Lord, I am not settling for anything small in this meeting. You have spoken through the mouth of your servant that great grace, great power, great power, great grace. I have not come to collect something small. I have come to receive great grace that has great power embedded in it. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say amen to that. I want to show you three examples in the scriptures of God bringing out power by grace. And please, as this word is going on, connect yourself to it. Listen, I say this again and again. When the word of God is going, it's like a dove moving around, seeking for a place where it will manifest. The place where it is accepted is the place where it will manifest. So that's why you need to connect and accept. Listen, and let me also tell you that no man of God, not even a man of God in the caliber of Big Daddy, will just give a theme to any program just because he slept overnight and he woke up and he wants to give a theme. It comes by revelation. And let me tell you, if you don't know, what God wants to do at a point in time is what he released to his servants as themes for meetings. So what God wants to do in this program is to release great power and great grace. That is why he gave it to him by revelation. So if you are a member of this household and you cannot eat from the table of your father, you are on your own. If me, I am here. I am not just coming here to minister. I have come to tap grace. You don't know anything. I know how to collect grace, so... Ah, yeah. You'll be surprised that I'm going to collect more grace than everybody here tonight. Hallelujah. Because standing here is also grace. Hello, you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I want you to know that God has prepared something for you. Please, I plead with you by the Spirit of the Living God. Don't let it go away. Don't leave it here and go home. It is for you. God has a portion of great grace and great power for you in your ministry, in your home, in your business, in your body, in your life, in everything that pertains to you and you and you and you and you and you. That is why the servant of the Lord has declared it. And hear me this third night, you have to gather your own. Please let me tell your neighbor, don't disturb me, I want to gather my grace. I know what I'm talking about. I don't joke when I'm preaching. Tell your neighbor, please don't disturb me. I want to gather my grace. Not just ordinary grace. Grace, grace. And great power. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's quickly go to the book of Acts chapter 4. It's a story that we all know. 
I'm not going to bore you with all the details. We are going to read a few, a few verses there in Acts chapter 4. Now, let me just give you a little preamble. Of course you know that Jesus told the disciples, tarry in Jerusalem, receive power, and go about and preach the gospel in everywhere, 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 preach the gospel from Jerusalem to Samaria to Judea to the uttermost part of the earth. And immediately Jesus Christ left, when they received the Holy Ghost, began to preach the gospel. One day, Peter and John preached the gospel. Because of the preaching of the gospel, by a miracle that happened in chapter 3, they were seized. And they were in jail overnight. All the powers that be at that time seized them, put them in jail. Please follow me very, very critically. Over the night. By the following morning, they brought them and they said, Look, why are you preaching this gospel? And Apostle Peter stood up and he said, We have to preach this gospel. We were commanded to do so. so and he began to defend the gospel. But despite the defense that he gave, they looked at him and they warned him. They said, Look, never should you people preach the gospel anymore. Don't ever lift your voice to preach this gospel. From this moment forward, silence. I was reading the welcome address that Big Daddy wrote in that brochure. And he said, in these days, there are increasing activities of powers of darkness. Increasing activities of, of, of the works of the enemy. Just to silence the saints. Just to keep us under. Just to stop us from reaching where God wants us to reach. And he said, in this thing that the devil is doing, God is also releasing great grace and great grace and great power. Oh, when I read that, I was excited in my spirit. That was what happened in the book of Acts chapter 4. The devil wanted to silence them. Eventually they released them. They said, you can go, but we don't want to hear you preach anymore. Somebody would have thought that Peter and John would just go and take respite. They would say, well, God, we tried our best. To, you told us to preach and we preached, but they said we should not preach again. They knew at that point that the power they received on the day of Pentecost had worked to a level. Now they needed another level of power to go to the next level of the work of the ministry. Are you here tonight? The Bible says they went back and they gathered their company together and they began to pray. Let me warn you, watch out for your company. <laughs> That's another thing for another time. They gathered themselves together, the Bible says, and they began to pray. They said, Lord, do something beyond what you have been doing before. You have brought us to this level and the path of darkness has challenged us that we should not do more. Now we want to do much more than we did before. That's not ordinary grace they are asking for. They are asking for great grace. Are you with me? They said, Lord, by stretching forth your hands, let's, let's, read, let's read verse 24. Acts chapter 4 and verse 24. When they had heard that, they lifted up their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. That means, God, you are the one that has the final say. No power of darkness can stop us. Oh my God. You are the one that has authority. So they reminded God of his authority. Now jump to verse 29. And now, Lord... Behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants <laughs> that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things common verse 33 and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all <laughs> Hallelujah. They said, Lord, we can't stop here. In fact, 
for the devil challenging us, we want to go to the next level. We want more power. We want you to stretch your hand. Do much more than you did before. My Bible says God had them. God is about to hear somebody here tonight. Listen, if you will pray earnestly tonight, God will do something in your life. The Bible says the power of the Lord came down and they began to preach the gospel better than before. Verse 3 says, and with great power, with great power, they witnessed. With great power, they preached the gospel. With great power, they did many, many signs and wonders because of great grace. Can you see the infinite wisdom of God there? Like Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 40. God put the power inside the grace. So when he released the grace upon them, they began to exhibit power. He put great grace on them, they showed great power. Listen to me, when you see somebody exhibiting great power, it is not physical power, it is not bold faith. If you try bold faith, the devil will finish you. Boldness is different from bold faith. Many of us do both face. You know you are empty. You know there is nothing there. You want to do shakara, my friend, don't try it. But when you are bold, the devil himself knows that he cannot confront you. With boldness, they preach the gospel. Great power, because there was great grace. God answered the prayer they prayed. And if you read on from chapter 4, all through the Acts of Apostles, the power of the Lord began to move much more than ever before. I see the power of the Lord begin to move through somebody much more than ever before today in the name of Jesus. Oh, I don't know whom I'm talking to. I see, I see the power of the Lord move over somebody's life more than ever before. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This grace is so important. We cannot overemphasize or underemphasize it. That's why Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let's look at it, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles. Are you there? 1 Corinthians 15, 9, can I go on? For I am the least of the apostles that I'm not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God but by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain but I labored more abundantly than they all yet not I somebody say yet not I but the grace of God which was with me. Hear me tonight. So many things that Apostle Paul did. It was not by his strength. It was because God gave him grace. Oh, I pray tonight, as many of us as are yearning to serve the Lord much more than ever before, that God will bestow great grace upon you. And you'll be able to look back and you say, I am not what I am by myself, but by the great grace that God has released upon me. Take it if it is yours in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No wonder he kept saying in the scriptures, we need to grow in grace, we need to grow in grace, we need to grow in grace, because that is what we need. Do you know what surprised me? I didn't see that until I began to seek, seek the Lord for this program. The last verse of the whole Bible is, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's the very last. After God has said everything, he said the, the climax, the conclusion is grace. So, you see that we can't do anything without grace. If you have not been praying this prayer from today, when you wake up in the morning, say, Lord, I receive the grace for today. And let me tell you, life will be better. Your activities will be easier. The ministry will go better. Can I hear a big amen in this place? Listen, why am I starting with the spiritual? Why am I starting with great power for great grace in the spiritual? Why am I emphasizing this force? Because this is trem. This is trem. This is trem. This is trem. We need the power of God for greater exploits. This is trem. This is not places where people are bent to one mass. I've been to churches by God's grace. So many countries by His grace. You see places where after the word, everybody goes home and you, they fizzle out into the crowd. You don't see who is a Christian anymore. This is TREM. It is not like that. I know. Even though I am a member of TREM. I hope you know that. Hello. 
That's why I'm, I'm starting with this. Because I believe that what God wants to do is to put so much power and so much grace in our lives that the whole world will know that there are people who have contacted the presence of the Lord. That you'll be able to win souls much more than ever before. That before you know it, the whole of this place will be filled up in the next meeting. Is that possible? Many of us are intimidated because of what the devil is doing. Kill into this Acts chapter 4. When the devil comes against you in one way, tell the devil for what you have done, I'm going to deal with you. For what you have done, I am going to deal with you. It is not by bold faith, let me say it again. It is by the boldness that comes by grace. And thank God, God is ready to give us the power. He says, he giveth power to the faint. So when you see that you are weak, go to the Lord and you receive grace. Apostle Paul said, who is weak and I'm not weak? That's Second Corinthians chapter 11. He said, who is weak and I'm not weak? He said, I have my infirmities, but I glory in the infirmities. He said, I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, look at this, my infirmity. God said, my friend, my grace is sufficient for you. So, you might have an infirmity there, and you are like, because of this, I cannot do this. God said, he's going to give you enough grace that will overshadow your infirmity. And in that infirmity, you will still be preaching the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. When he has thoroughly used you, then he will show forth his glory upon your life. I remember the testimony of a sister who had been trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb for many years. When they say, let us go for evangelism, she will dodge. He say, ah, whom do I want to preach to? I have a problem. Thank God for my husband, Bishop. You know, he knows he's an evangelist to the cause, so he knows how to catch people. He won't announce that we are going to have an evangelism. In fact, that particular Sunday, he said we are going to have communion. You know, everybody loves communion. When we all gathered for communion, the table was set. He said, now, before we take this communion, everybody take yourself tutu. We didn't know where it was going. When we took ourselves tutu, he said, now, we are going now to preach the gospel. On a Sunday morning. And he said, well, if you dodge away, then you are on your own. I mean, by the time your pastor tells you that, you don't want to dodge away. This was this sister who had been there for 15 years. She had never ventured into doing one-on-one -on -one evangelism. So she went with a partner. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the first person they met was a person that knew her. So when she walked up to him and gave him a tract and began to preach, the man said, stop that, don't, don't talk to me. Let God do a miracle in your life first. When you I am telling you a true testimony. When God has answered you, then come and preach to me. I will hear the gospel. The sister was like, then suddenly, grace spoke suddenly strength rose up in her suddenly the power of the lord came upon her and she looked at the man she said listen to me god has answered my prayers he said but let me tell you what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul you can have everything if you don't have jesus you go to hell that is why i've come to preach the gospel to you God helped her, she spoke to the man. The man was convicted, but you see, the devil allowed pride to work. And he said, well, I've had you, I will go and consider it, but I'm waiting for your testimony, and she left. When she came to church after the service, she knelt before the altar all by herself. And she said, Lord, you have been challenged today, not me. And because of this challenge, I am going to make sure I preach the gospel to at least one person every day. Because I know that you are going to do something great in my life. She prayed that prayer and she, she didn't even talk to anybody. She prayed it and she left. Do you know that same month God visited her? She had two boys. To the glory of God. May God give somebody grace tonight. Don't judge from God's responsibility. All you need is... No, you didn't answer me. All you need is... All you need is... No, no, no. Graduate from grace. That's not the theme. All you need is... Now you are talking. <laughs> All you need is great grace. Oh, and I've cried to the Lord myself today. I said, Lord, I want more grace. There is a lot to do for the kingdom. There is a lot. The enemy is doing terrible things everywhere. But we shall rise after this meeting. I said we shall rise after this meeting. The manifestation of the Lord is going to flow through us. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. God brought great grace upon the disciples 
and mighty things began to happen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 8 verse 6. You don't have to read it. We all know it. The Bible says the whole world was, 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 was in chaos, was in shambles. God looked at the whole world and he was not happy with them. But Noah found grace in the sight of God. Noah found grace in the sight of God. And in the next verse, God called Noah. He said, Noah, come on, come here, come here, come here. There is a problem all over this place. But I want to use you. I want to use you to do what nobody has ever done. Because there is a grace that I'm going to bestow upon you. Listen, Noah didn't do what he did by his strength. <clears throat> Noah did not do what he did simply because God called him. How many people did God call and they refused? He called Jonah. Did Jonah answer him? God said, go to Nineveh. And where did he go? He went to Tashish. God called Peter. He followed. Okay, okay, okay. At a point, he deviated. And God looked at him. He said, do you love me more than this? So God knew that what Noah needed to do that great work, you know that was the beginning of God's interaction with man, was grace. So Noah found grace in the sight of God. God gave him grace. And when he had given him grace, he called him to do this work. That grace empowered Noah. May God's grace empower somebody here tonight. That what somebody else has never done, you will do. It's not by power nor might. God said, build me an ark. Go and read the dimension of that ark. Listen to me. At the time of Noah, there is no crane. There are no technologies. There, all he had was his hand. Can you see the grace that worked for Noah? Sometimes when you are reading the scripture, put up an imagination. Noah had just his hand and crude implements. But he built the ark. That was grace. Be, despite all odds, he built it. Noah went ahead and he said, look, rain will follow. Rain will follow. God said, rain will follow. I'm sure everybody was looking at Noah. Is this man in his right senses? Because rain has never fallen. Ah, can you see what we are talking about grace here? Yeah. Great grace. Noah found grace. God gave him grace. And because he gave him grace, he was able to fulfill his, his assignment. May God give you grace to fulfill your assignment today. Yeah. Let me repeat myself. I'm saying this again and again because the spiritual is more important than every other thing. Listen, when you begin to advance in the spiritual, every other thing will follow. I can testify to that. Every other thing will follow. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The third example is Esther. I want us to read that. Esther chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. I'm going to be rounding up shortly. Esther chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. You know the story of Esther? I don't want to bore you with all the details, but look at verse 16. So, Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Now take note of something here. After everything said and done, the first thing that happened to Esther was grace. It was after grace that favor came. And read through the book of Esther, you will never see that word grace mentioned any longer. Other times are favor, 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 favor. Because the thing, the deposit of grace, release favor. Hallelujah. 
there was a grace, there was an empowerment. There was, you know, the, the king saw grace. God put the grace upon her, and by reason of that grace, favor began to follow Esther. Let me tell you, it was that same grace that was working when she entered into the court of the king. Contrary to the law, that grace was still there. It is already upon her. So, favor her to follow. Listen to me. When God deposits grace upon your life, grace will attract favor. It will attract favor. Grace will draw the blessing. Grace will take you beyond what you are thinking. Grace will, 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 will so bless you with things that you are, not, you are not even qualified for because that grace is the embodiment. Let me give you an example. You want to drink orange juice. You don't go to an orange tree and you say you want to you want to tap juice. No, no, you don't tap juice from orange tree. What do you get? You get the orange fruit. Inside that fruit, you can make your juice. That's the way God packaged a lot of things into grace. Please, if you forget anything, remember this analogy. In that orange, there is vitamin C. In that orange, there is fiber. In that orange, there is juice. In that orange, there is um, the seed. In that orange, everything is, that is needed is in that orange. All you need to get is get the orange. If you can get grace today, every other thing will be added. Hallelujah. All through her reign, favor, 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 favor followed her. May favor follow somebody today in the name of the Lord Jesus. How do we contact this great grace? From the scripture we read in Acts chapter 4, we saw that they prayed. Listen, grace does not come by wish. Grace does not come... You, don't, you can't copy grace. Mm -mm. When you see somebody manifest great grace, you can be moved, but try to copy him, you are going to fail. Have you ever watched some of these dancers? The way they dance and some assault. I'm remembering that now because we had a program not long ago and young teenage children were somersaulting and falling. When they fall, I would do like this. I would do like this. And then the, the man that brought them said, don't try this at home. Then the Holy Spirit just ministered to me. It is grace. You can't copy grace. And let me tell you, you can't criticize grace. If you criticize grace, you're on your own. Because the man with the grace, we continue to increase and increase and increase and increase and increase. Hallelujah. If you see something that you love and you celebrate, pray, for, pray to the Lord for it. Celebrate it. And be excited about whom the Lord has given that grace. Because it is in doing that that you too will get your own. The problem with many people that complain and castigate men of God here and there and say this and say that is because they don't have the same grace. Many of them. And they cannot pay the price for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prayer is so important. And that's why I'm going to show you this last example in 10 minutes. Genesis chapter 32. Grace comes in the place of prayer. If there's anything I love is to pray. And we are going to pray tonight. So are you ready? <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 32. Jacob had cheated Esau. He went to Laban's house. But when it was time, God said, oh yeah, go back. And immediately, Jacob was afraid and distressed. That's what the scripture says. He was afraid and distressed. Because he remembered that they, he had a problem with Esau. Listen to me. So when he was going, he knew that hey, there is a problem that he had to confront. 
There's a problem he needs. He, he cannot run away from it. Guilt and fear was upon him. Well, he started on his journey. He was going to face the consequence of his past. But later he realized. He said, look, I need grace. I need grace. I need to contact grace from Esau. He said, okay, let me try this. He began to try some tactics. In verse 5, he said, I have oxen and asses and flocks and men servants and women servants. And I have sent them to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. <laughs> so what Jacob thought he could do was to appease Esau with presents. We are talking about how to contact grace. And if you read through, you will see all the things that Jacob packaged. The Bible says 200 she-goats, 20 he-goats, 200 female sheep, 20 rams, 30 nursing camels with their babies, 40 oxen, 10 bulls, 20 she-asses, 10 young horses, all of them 550. I don't, you see, how, can you see the percentage of the, of, the, of the things that Jacob had that he sent to Esau, to appease Esau? That is to let you know how fearful and distressed he was. The Bible says he divided them into three groups. He said, okay, you group one, go. Servants we follow. When you meet Saul, tell him that Saul, I have this, I have, th I mean, Esau, sorry. I have this, I have that. I am sending them to appease you in case I will find grace in your sight. If he does not respond to the first group, by the time the second group gets there, he should respond. If the second group gets there and doesn't respond, by the time the third group gets there, he should respond. So you people should go. But let me tell you, they had gone, but Jacob had no peace. Jacob was still distressed. He was still greatly afraid. I don't know what your, your situation is tonight. I have good news for you. You have come to a place where your fear will cease. You have come to a place where your distresses will be, will be laid to rest. Because we are in the presence of the living God. This is the house of the Almighty. Where his eyes are perpetually day and night. Jacob later told himself, he said, look, this thing might not work. Because it did not stop Esau, Esau moved past them and he was still advancing to meet Jacob. Then, my Bible says in verse 24, that's where I want us to read. Verse 24, verse 22. And he took and he rose up that night, took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons, and passed over the fraud Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook. He sent them that he had away. And Jacob was left alone. And what did he do? There wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Jump to verse 27. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, thou hast power with God and with man, and you have... I didn't hear you. You have... You have... You have. <laughs> Jacob knew that this one is not by bribery and corruption. Listen to me, it is not by bribery. That thing you are looking for, God will give you in this meeting. I know what the Lord told me. There are some things that you cannot get by yourself. Grace will do it for you. Write it down. In this third night, there will be great testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You have tried everything, everything, everything you can try and it's not working. It is grace that we speak of. Power will come by grace. Jacob wrestled with God. He said, God, look, 
send the wife, send the children. But all of you, get away, get out of my sight. You cannot help me. Look, I need to wrestle. He didn't let God go. That is the power of prayer. Grace is contacted in the place of prayer. If you are a person that has a weak prayer life, I have come to challenge you tonight. Your prayer life must increase after this meeting. You wake up in the morning, you're under the shower and you're speaking in tongues. Lord, I thank you. And you enter into your car, so you kick the car, you're speaking in tongues. It is good, but it is not good enough. Speaking in tongues under the shower, speaking in tongues when you're driving your car, is not what will give you great grace, you. Hello? October 1st, you say, I can't joke with my belly. Eh? By the time your belly deals with you, you will know that you need to put the belly aside sometimes. Don't wait until church decrees, declares fast. Seek the Lord. In fact, it's a criminal offense when church declares fast and you don't fast. That one is ordinary grace to fast when church say fast. Because the grace of the assembly is enough for you. By the time Big Daddy comes and says we are fasting, let me tell you, grace covers everybody. And let me tell you, if you have usa, just know that that usa will go. Because there is a grace that is upon that instruction. Don't joke with the power of the Almighty. Get yourself into the grace because there is a grace. There is a resident grace here. There is. We love there is. You don't know what you have. And I'm not just saying this by sentiment. No, I'm talking what I know. When he sought the Lord, God said, now Jacob, I am going deep, 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 deep into the root of the problem. There are some deliverances that are surface deliverance. There are some things that are temporal, but there are some things that are deep. He said, you, are, you have power with me and with man. So the grace you are looking for, the grace you are seeking to receive from Esau, I am giving it to you. I have put power. Power bringing grace. That power is with me and with man, including Esau. And if you look at chapter 31, the Bible says, chapter 33 verse 1, which is the last scripture I'm reading, the Bible says, now look at that, chapter 33 verse 1, and Jacob lifted his eyes up, and he looked, and behold, Esau came, and with him 400 men, and he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmen. And he put the handmaidens and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. And he passed over between them, and he bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. And Esau ran to meet him. What did he do? He embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Put your hands together for Jesus, this God of heaven. I love this God. What is Jacob nearly died? Distress, hypertension almost killed him. Because he prevailed and God gave him power. Everything changed. Now look at this. <laughs> and Esau said to Jacob, verse 8, what is the meaning of all the droves that I met on the way? All those she goats, he goats, ram, horses, oxen. What is the meaning of all those, those, those 500 and something? What does it mean? And what did Jacob say? He said, I have sent these things to do what? To find grace in your sight. But did it work? Talk to me, somebody. Did it work? The place of prayer superseded all the bribery and corruption. I call it bribery and corruption. The grace superseded it. The power of God superseded it. In fact, Jacob still pleaded again. He said, if I find grace in your sight, Esau, please take it. Esau said, I don't need all this. I don't need it. I don't need it. You have already prevailed with God. So I'm not going to kill you. Instead of killing you, I'm going to be your bouncer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Instead of killing you, I'm going to make sure that you get where you're going. I'm going to make my men to guide you and to guard you. Listen to me tonight. God is about to give somebody a miracle. 
you don't understand what I'm talking about. I'm not just saying it. I know that I know that I know that God is about to give somebody a miracle. I know that God is about to release power by His grace to your life tonight. I know that I know that your life will never remain the same again. Holding on the anointing that brought that word. Great power, great grace. God is about to turn your life around. I didn't hear a loud amen. He given power to the weak. To those that have no might, he increases strength. The youth shall run and be weary. Youth, they are strong people. Young men will utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I should step out of here tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Things begin to fall in place for you. And as you continue to receive grace and grace, you will run and you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. I hope you understand that scripture. Each time they ask for more grace, God gave them more and more and more. That is why when you wait on the Lord, your strength is renewed. Hallelujah. We are going to pray tonight. I want to pray. I don't know about you. There is a lot that God has placed in our hands, church. The devil is raging and raging. We need to receive more grace. They said, Lord, behold their threatenings. Look at our predicaments. Do something. God did it. We are going to pray. I don't know what you are doing for the Lord. I don't know your assignment. But I want you to cry to the Lord tonight and say, Lord, I, do, I, I thank you for the grace I have already. I want more grace. Greater grace. Greater power. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Is somebody ready to pray? We are going to all lift up our voices. Beloved, I want you to cry to the Lord. Pray like you have never prayed this week. If you want to kneel down, you can kneel down. If you want to lie down, you can lie down. If you want to shout, you can shout. If you want to cry, you can cry. Lift your voice and say, Lord, give me greater grace. Let greater power begin to manifest through me. So that greater signs and wonders will be done in your name. That the whole world will know that we serve the living God. That the enemy may be brought down. That the powers of the, of the enemy will be put under. That Jesus, Jesus, Jesus will be proclaimed as, as Lord. All those people around you that don't, know the, that don't know Jesus, that have not heard the gospel, you're going to ask the Lord to give you grace tonight. Many of you have never ventured into preaching the gospel before. When you get out of here tonight, you're going to go straight to somebody and say, Jesus loves you. You need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Lift your voice, don't look at me. Lift your voice and pray. Let the power of the Lord come upon us tonight. Oh, Rashanda Yabasata. Jesus, we look to you tonight. We ask for great grace, great power, great grace, great power. In your grace there is power. In your grace there is power. Release your grace upon us tonight. Release your grace upon us tonight. That as a church we will move forward. That as individuals we will move forward. We will do greater exploits for you. We have not finished anything. We have not done anything. There is still a lot to do. There is still a lot to do. Lord, we submit ourselves to you. We ask for more grace. We ask for more grace. We ask for greater 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 grace. Oh God, oh God, oh God. For the men, for the women, for the teenagers, for the singles, for the pastors, for every leader, for every one of us, all the workers. Oh Lord, I ask for myself and all my people, all abundant lifers, all tremites. Father, we ask for greater power, greater power, greater power. In the name of Jesus, greater grace, greater grace, greater grace. That we shall not be a disgrace to you. Oh, that people will not come and say, I, 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 I asked her that there was nothing she could do. Everywhere we have disgraced you. Because our grace is not enough. And we've been complaining. We have been complaining. We say God has forsaken us. Because there is no power. Tonight, Lord, we ask for greater power. For greater grace. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Renda yaba sata. Ida baba ba shantaya. Lekete mori ba sata yadaba. Iga da 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 da. Renda le baba ba shantaya. Korea. Jesus, 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 release your grace, release your grace, not just grace, not just grace, not small grace, but greater grace, greater grace, that we shall not be weak, that we shall not be weary. Oh God, that the much you have invested upon us, oh God, in this church, we shall exhibit it, we shall show it, that your name will be glorified. Lift your voice and pray. You have not prayed 10 minutes. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. As you pray, grace is coming on you. 
as you pray grace is coming on you be specific whatever you do for the lord ask for greater grace if you are a singer ask for greater grace if you are a preacher ask for greater grace if you i'm talking about spiritual grace don't ask for physical things yet oh he says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all other things shall be added for the work the lord has committed into our hands lord will receive greater grace lord will receive greater grace even as an office staff oh we receive greater grace whatever it is whatever it is any area where you are serving ask for grace ask for grace oh rakashata yaba it was grace upon the servant of naman that made her to lead the master to the healer ah jesus i ask for greater grace greater grace greater grace greater grace greater grace rata yada basete ida da 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 randa la baba shata ya eke teke le broda shanda mandari kala brada seya ige de 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 bobo bo santa ya iga la baraka sata inda la baba basete ya maya da baba bakoria yanta seke le le boso ya 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 baba seke rika sala baba basaria oh lord grace 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 not just great grace great grace great grace great grace great grace oh lord great grace in the name of jesus ida bashata ya in the name of bobo shoria mandara baba kuria ndara bashata ikasakaria da bashata ya maya da la bakotoria da bashandara baba reka ra baba shada ya ba oh jesus In Jesus name we have prayed. I'm going to sing this song three times. We are still praying. I have no power of my own. It's a song of prayer. Don't just sing. Pray. Power of my own. I confess to you Holy Spirit of God. I have no So let's sing it to the Lord. I have no power of my own. I don't know about you. I have no power of my own. I confess to you, Holy Spirit of God. I have no. listen to this do something new through my life something new through my life something new through my life